Hello everyone. Welcome back to study tips for IGCSE Mathematics. Today's topic is related to managing money. Without further delay, let's begin. During your life so far, you will have solved problems relating to money on a daily basis. You will continue to do this as you get older, but the problem you have to solve may become more complicated as you start earning and spending money, borrowing money and saving money. So in this chapter, you will apply some of the math skills you have already learned to solve real world problems. So you will use your calculator to find the answer quickly and efficiently. Earning money. When you are employed, you earn money, get paid for the work you do. Earning can be worked out in different ways. Make sure you understand this term. Wages. Wages meaning pay based on a fixed number of hours work, usually paid weekly. Extra hours of work are called overtime and these are paid at a higher rate. Salary. Pay based on a fixed year's amount, usually paid monthly. Overtime may be paid or workers may be given time off in exchange. This work, pay based on the number of items produced. And commission, pay is based on a percentage of sale made, sometimes a low wage, called a retainer, is paid as well as commission. Reduction from earning means that gross income earning refer to the total amount a person earns. And deduction, such as income tax, pension, contribution, unemployment, and health insurance, and union dues are often taken from the gross earning before the person is paid. The amount that is left over after deduction is called the net income. Formula for to derive the net income is gross income minus deduction. And you can get net income. Borrowing and investing money. When you borrow money or you buy things on credit, you are normally charged interest for the use of the money. Similarly, when you save or invest money, you are paid interest by the bank or financial institution in return for allowing them to keep and use your money. Simple interest. Simple interest is a fixed percentage of the original amount borrowed or invested. In other words, if you borrow $100 at an interest rate of 5% per year, you will be charged $5 interest for every year of the loan. Simple interest involves adding the interest amount to the original amount at regular intervals. The formula used to calculate simple interest is as below. Interest is equivalent to principal multiplied by interest rate multiplied by time divided by 100. P is actually represent the principal which is the original amount borrowed or saved. R represent interest rate and T is actually represent time in a year. You have to remember this formula, okay? For borrowing and investing money. You can manipulate the formula to find any of the value. Example, to find an interest is equivalent to principal multiplied by interest rate multiplied by time divided by 100. If let's see if you want to, to find the principal, so 100 multiplied by interest uh, divided by, uh, by interest rate and over the time. If you want to find the, the interest rate, so you have 200, okay, multiply by the uh, I. I is equivalent to PRP divided by 100, okay, and then divided by PT. PT means interest, uh, P is principal, T is over time. So you have to remember all this formula. The question is basically is all about 
formula, formula given, but you have to remember the formula. So, given the questions uh, regarding the borrowing and investing money, for example, $500 is invested, is invested at 10% per annum, simple interest. How much interest is earned in three years? 10% of $500 is equal to 50. So, the interest rate is 10% per annum. So, the interest every year is $50. So, after three years, the interest is, you have to multiply 50 with the three years. So, you got the value is $150. Okay, compound interest. Compound interest is a simple interest is calculated on the original amount, saved or borrowed. It is more common, however, to earn or to be charged compound interest. With a loan where you are charged compound interest, the interest is added to the amount. You owe at regular interval, so the amount you owe increases for the next period. When you invest money for the fixed period, you can earn compound interest. So in this case, the interest earned is added to the amount each period and you then earn interest on the amount plus the interest for the next period. One way of doing compound interest calculation is to view them as a series of simple interest calculation. This method is shown in the following work example. Okay, Priya invests $100 at the rate of 10% compounded annually. And how much money will she have after three years? You know that to find the interest is PRT over 100. Principal interest rate times times divided by 100. So in this case, $100 times 10% times 1. So you get $10. Okay. Let's say uh, principal plus interest equals to 100 plus 10 is equals to 110. This is for the first year. The second year, you use the same formula, PRT over 100. So 110, because the amount, principal plus interest is already 110. So 110 times 10% times 1 is become $11. Okay? So to get what is the interest for year 2, Okay, so, so you have to principal plus interest where the principal you get $11 plus $110 so the total will be $121. So when you want to find for the next year which is the third year so I equals to PRP divided by 100. The same thing. So the total principal plus interest is already $121 times 10% times 10 times 1, 10, or divided by 100, is become $12, 10 cent. So now, uh, how much that you have to pay for the year 3 is principal plus an interest, so it become 133 plus 10. 133.10 cent. So this is the amount that you have to pay for the third year. So this is how you calculate uh, compounded interest. Okay, percentage, how to calculate percentage profit and loss. What is profit and loss are normally calculated as percentage of the cost price. Okay, the following formulas are used to calculate percentage profit or loss. Okay, percentage profit. How do you want to know how much profit that you made is, formula is actual profit divided by cost price Multiply by 100%. If you want to calculate the loss, percentage of the loss is actual loss divided by the cost price times 100%. Okay? You have to remember this formula. Okay? So, I give you the example of percentage profit and loss. For example, the question is, a shopkeeper buy an article for $500. And sell it for six hundred dollar. 
by these questions already, you already know the profit is already 100. How I say that here 100 is profit is actually selling price minus cost price. Okay, let's say it says 600 and it buy the articles 500. So from there, we can see that if you close your eyes also, you know already that the profit that you make is already $100. Okay, to calculate the percentage profit is profit divided by cost multiply 100%. So you know that your profit is 100 divided by the cost cost price of the articles is about $500 and then multiply by 100%. So from this, you might get the result percentage profit is 20%. Okay, let's look the second example under percentage profit and loss. Okay, the question says that a person buy a car for $16,000. Okay, and sell it for $12,000. You just imagine, he bought the car at $16,000. But when he sell the car at the price of $12,000. From here, it already shows that it's already made a loss. How much you make a loss is cost price minus selling price, which is $16,000 minus $12,000 is become $4,000. $4,000 is a loss. Okay. To calculate the percentage of loss is loss divided by cost multiply 100%. So $4,000 divided by $16,000 multiply by 100 You can get the percentage of loss is 25%. It's huge. Okay. It's really huge. Okay, I think that's all for this um, topic regarding managing money. Okay, that's all for today. So I hope you have to remember the formula and make a lot of exercise. The more you practice, the more, the more perfect you are. Thank you.